4,000 calories a day. None of us can do that. I can't fucking do that. I know like the top guys in the fitness industry who can't fucking do that. That's like absolutely nonsensical. Like to be honest, I'm not gonna plug all these into chronometer and see if she's lying about the macros. I can just tell off the bat that she's not eating over 4,000 calories because it's physically impossible. Unless she was literally like severely hyperthyroid and on a shit ton of hormones, the genetic anomaly this would have to be for somebody at her size to be able to eat this much food and actually process it and stay that lean. Like there should be a fucking study about your body. Like that's up this is there should be literally a funded research study about your metabolism the only way you can eat 4,000 calories a day at that size is if you're doing maybe six to eight hours of cardio a day cardio with no hand or abusing pds such as dnp or you're not actually keeping the food down you may have eaten it but it didn't stay in you now did it the purpose of this video it's not to bash her to put her down it's to use her to explain the problems that can result in the fitness industry okay perfect so this is probably actually going to give us the most realistic timeline so i think this is a sufficient place to actually start the video so hi everybody i'm damon and today i want to talk to you guys about the interesting case to be made for jen peach and her 4,000 calories per day in remaining rep so uh initially there was a lot of contention with this video when it first came out um i had originally watched derek from more place more Days' video on it um february of last year when it originally came out but at the time i wasn't doing youtube uh and it was kind of what wanted uh me to actually end up making the videos i remember posting something about um how i was relatively disappointed in the fact that he just sort of glossed over the fact that she was anorexic and potentially that could have explained away why she actually needed 4,000 calories because um I figured that it was more common knowledge that when people are recovering that they have a hyper metabolic response to calories and food and in tandem with their recovery any additional exercise should typically be avoided to prevent the excessive need for calories um but that wasn't really addressed and when i was going through and dissecting his video which actually i ended up completely uh finished a recording but i didn't really look into her case too closely and then i realized that um greg Doucette had a video of it as well and then when i was going through and googling more information about her to find out more uh i found that um obese to beast actually made a video about it as well and everyone really seems to be glossing over the fact that she was anorexic and had immediately gone into weight training um she was in and out of inpatient for over seven years and she had made this post which had um talked about one year ago i made a promise to myself that i would stay strong that I would overcome my illness and be a leader to those who needed help one year later i continue to follow this promise so through this picture it says that there is a one year difference and if you compare this, if this is the case where this is exactly one year apart, um, and you can see that she has gum weight training, before this post, she had made another sort of um, big life update where she was actually able to start weight training uh, in a public commercial gym uh, after she had gotten clearance from her doctor. So there's about a two month period where she is actually able to weight train instead of just doing core workouts and also the uh, working out at home, getting sufficient stimulus to train. And I thought that that was actually relatively interesting. So if you haven't heard of this case, or if you are new to the whole uh, Jen Peaches controversy, this girl uh, had claimed to eat 4,000 calories uh, and everybody was very quick to call BS on it, uh, selling a dangerous size over 4,000 calories a day and shredded. She claims to eat over 4,000 calories per day and stays nice to the socks. Is she actually eating 4,000 calories? So each video actually talks about a slightly different sort of case. Um, when it comes to Derek's video, he was more dismissive of the fact that she's actually consuming that amount of calories because you can't eat that amount of calories without staying shredded, without the use of, or, without the use of performance enhancing drugs or things like uh, thyroid medication. Greg's video was just more calling her a liar, saying that she was lying about eating the 4,000 calories because if she was, she was going to remain bloated and that it is hard for most men to actually consume that amount of food when they are going to be eating a lot of food throughout their day and they are bodybuilders or they're competitive eaters or they're just people that have a history of eating a lot of those foods and given that they would have difficulty, she's obviously lying. Uh, I got about halfway through this video, actually not even halfway, I got to um, about a minute and a half and then I'd skimmed through and then I had sort of uh, gone through and realized that it was going to be more or less the same thing. I went through the uh, Reddit post though and there was a point here 
where again someone's missing the mark but they actually have very good foundational knowledge so it says hey nutrition science student here which again same it says her claim is complete bs your metabolism more specifically your bmr uh he goes into depth or they go into depth rather and says depending on weight height age and sex taller individuals have more surface area and bone which is highly metabolic active meaning they need more as you get heavier the body has more mass it needs to sustain with age your bmr decreases mainly due to only muscle mass more specifically muscle mass loss and burns a lot of calories as with jen she's very light here and therefore her bmr would be relatively low so again for the individual to look at this and say that um you know given your bmr you would have a relatively low amount of caloric need all else held constant that is true for every other individual excluding the cases for people with anorexia which i'm going to back up my claim because not only am i going to be putting out the sort of uh citations that i study in the comments and the video description alongside of resources like beat and nita Beat is going to be an individual organization that is overseas for people in the United Kingdom that where they can get help with their eating disorders. NIDA is going to be an uh, institution inside of the United States which can help people get access to resources for their eating disorders. But alongside of those, I'm going to be putting in the links to a lot of these studies I have. But you can see here that they have an IP, which is an inpatient who has a relatively high caloric requirement, 4,000 calories in per day in order to gain weight. And it says IP denied all counterproductive behaviors, thus initial low energy intake. Her meal plan later in refeeding phase was adjusted to 4,000 calories per day, resulting in a steady increase in body weight. Usually at this stage, your patients achieve weight gain with lower diets around 2,500 to 3,000 calories per day. Um, they did go in and check her thyroid hormones as well as other sorts of things to make sure that she didn't have IBD, which uh, if you go through some of Jen's posts, she does talk about having IBD and uh, irritable bowel syndrome, meaning that her metabolic uh, adaptation to this food is going to be much lower because she's not going to be digesting her foods properly meaning that she will need even more as a result but for this individual if we go through and we look at their um their total hormones her thyroid is relatively low she's on the lower normal end of a reference range for her thyroid hormones but her thyroid stimulating hormone is just about in the reference range uh smack dab in the middle her free t4 is relatively low as is her free t3 um so that's going to have an impairment with her uh, adaptation to uh, metabolic response, but she's not hyper metabolic either. So that's something to note as well. But you can see here, this individual has uh, exceeded the 5,000 calorie per day mark in order to maintain an increase in their body weight during their restoration. And you can see here that um, obviously the individual in inpatient is also not going to be doing strenuous weight training, which if you go through some of her posts, you can see that she is doing uh, relatively heavy lifts in her workouts, uh, besides from the goblet squats and the uh, failed squat rep there, which, um, again, <laughs> going to be an indicator of, you know, relatively hard training for her, as well as, um, yeah, sufficiently heavy lifting for her. She's only able to do the partial reps, and you can see some other posts where she is just, uh, banging out weights to failure to the point of like actual legitimate failure as well not just like getting a quick pump in the heavy weight for one rep max as well as her flexibility and yogi training uh this is an individual who has done what is going to be quite possibly one of the uh, most interesting things and that is going from the point of recovery in terms of an eating disorder immediately into the utility behind the gym she has a couple of posts where she talks about her past history of being in and out of inpatient and always training her abs which could potentially explain why they're so blocky and dense and so prominent alongside of this she also does extensive weight training training her shoulders and her upper back as well as her legs and i feel like those put together could explain why she has the first just the apparent density but in tandem when you are much leaner you look much more dense and rocky and um like blocky so, so if you want like a good male version of this um not to say that he's recovering from an eating disorder and if we put away the whole natty or not thing for a second if you look at some of david Lade's like progress transformation pictures you can see that he has very prominent abs despite the fact that he is relatively lanky quote unquote in some of his very very early stages and when he does just sufficient weight training in tandem with being in a caloric surplus you can see that he practically just gets like these lean gains and he looks like he has incredible abs and his development just kind of like progresses insanely well you can see the same thing with jeff's side and all these other sorts of athletes which again is going to be indicative of ped use but um obviously when it is the case that you have a sufficiently high caloric intake you're going to have in tandem a very high amount of protein accrual and when you are literally going from a point of being emaciated to further incorporating more foods that are going to refill out your entire body and 
put you in a nitrogen positive environment that is going to be a more favorable place for lean muscle accrual not to say that it is 30 pounds of pure lean contractile tissue and that it is 30 pounds of pure muscle obviously there's going to be some things like water retention due to her organs just getting a sufficient amount of protective fat and padding as well as her muscles being refueled as well as some amount of lean muscle accrual as a result of just first time stimulus or sufficient first time stimulus of weight training so when it comes to the combination of factors given that we know that there is a sufficiently higher need for calories for an individual who has undergone an eating disorder and to maintain a stable weight and to prevent the uh, loss of their total tissue and their accompanying re-weight gain but we can see in some of the other studies i'm going to put in the comments that People who undergo uh, severe amounts of wasting due to things like anorexia or just people who have undergone starvation that they do have a sufficiently high caloric need. Now again, high caloric need in tandem with exercise is an incredibly high red flag and I don't want this to be like I am being potentially just aloof to the fact that an individual could be lying and anecdotally I do know um, unfortunately, people that have been at a point where they had undergone inpatient treatment and had actually sought out veganism due to the high amounts of low calorie, high volume foods that they could utilize in order to mask their eating disorder, despite the fact that they were low calories in tandem with things like exercise to make sure that they were restricting their weight and giving the appearance of just having a high metabolism. Um, you know, so I'm not completely aloof to the fact that it could just be, hey, let me put up all these pictures and uh, I'm going to eat all this stuff and then just uh, puke it up. I don't uh, think that it's actually the case where it's just uh, binging and purging. Uh, if you look at the progression, there's actually a significant amount of muscle accrual, uh, despite the fact that she's relatively tiny. Like if you look at some of these posts where you can see here where she is um, sufficiently lean and uh, just more cloudy in and of itself and then over time you can see a slight bulking and then um, in tandem just relative lean gains for a sufficient period of time it doesn't seem to me to be the case that it's an individual who is binging and purging consistently like obviously this is going to be first thing in the morning uh, yeah first thing in the morning bloated versus flexed and then throughout the rest of the day obviously that's going to go away and that's made apparent in some of these posts where it's obviously been taken midday at the gym where it looks less favorable than others and obviously you can argue all you want about you know how manipulative it is to utilize the things like best lighting waking up early in the morning and then getting a sufficient amount of pump but if you like the differences in lean muscle accrual just objectively you can see that there is actual contractile tissue being gained and that is indicative of somebody that is going to one not only be given sufficient stimulus and training patterns but somebody who is also in tandem accruing lean tissue as a result of a caloric surplus um obviously you can't be in a staunch calorie deficit and be making these sorts of gains um even if you are someone who is a newbie you could potentially argue that um you can make relatively good gains on maintenance calories but uh given all else that is uh being put into here, um, I would argue that, I mean, if there is any weight restriction, it is going to be towards the latter parts where we can see that there is difference in her overall appearance towards the end. Like, and what I mean towards the end, I mean like towards her last set of posts, you can see that there is um, difference in terms of her not just being leaner and more shredded, but also in her muscle density. Um, Obviously, if you look at her profile picture versus her shoulders and this, there's not that much of a difference, but from her profile picture to her last one, you can see that there is much less lean tissue um, in terms of like actual muscle mass as well as like actual body fat. And that would be more indicative of weight restriction in my opinion versus some of these posts that were made right around the time at the height of her popularity. I think that when she was making the post about the eating the 4,000 calories per day, it wasn't a lie. I think it was literally somebody who had that amount of calories to necessitate her bulking and then consequently when dialing back her calories to a more sustainable burden, uh, you know, maybe like 2,500 to 2,750. Individuals who are eating a sufficiently high amount of calories just to maintain their weight or in order to put on bulk, that when they dip down into their calories that they are going to see a significant weight reduction. And you can even see it here that, um, you know, this individual is going up 
and then once they drop it down to just about 3500 there's actually a weight loss so then they reintroduce it to just about 4500 to make a peak weight and then we can see that consequently with every single drop in these calories that there is an insufficient amount of weight gain or that there is a weight loss until eventually you reach a basal point where you can sort of consistently maintain that weight with a sufficient loss and this inpatient was doing this uh, from week one all the way up to 41 weeks later to maintain the weight restoration and this individual was also not undergoing extensive amounts of heavy weight resistance training as well this was somebody who was going on um, a fair amount of walks about 20,000 steps per day on average so again not anyone who's you know lifting a bunch of heavy weights and when I say heavy Obviously, I mean for this individual in particular, it is enough to provide sufficient stimulus for muscular hypertrophy. I know there's a lot of dudes out here that are going to easily curl 40 pounds and, um, you know, work out relatively harder, but all else held constant, I think the case can be made that at one point in time, this individual was absolutely going to be able to consume 4,000 calories and still keep this shredded slash like yoked physique. Um, and I think that the reduction of this is going to, uh, yeah, so 2,500 to 4,000 over the course of six months. So yeah, bulking and then consequently going to titrate up those calories, that's going to be absolutely different. Um, the claims, that if you were to make this claim that anybody else could eat, be eating 4,000 calories per day, I would argue that that is not sustainable without the use of performance enhancing drugs or thyroid hormone utility. That is absolutely not the case. For this individual, I absolutely think that there was no dishonesty in the statement that at one point the 4,000 calories per day may have been necessitated. Especially when you're somebody who's on social media, you're going to receive a lot of criticism. You're going to have a lot of people calling you out. So I feel like if you were trying to mask it, you wouldn't make it so dramatic and so egregious and make it so, you know, in your face like, hey, here's this really, really, really outlandish claim. I figure it would be more moderate, but just enough to elicit like a, hey, I'm actually eating and trying and trying to get better. I don't think that it would be a good idea to be that intentionally deceptive with that much of an outrageous claim if you wanted to actually mask your eating disorder. I don't think that that is something that would be beneficial. Um, nor do I just think that that was something she was doing. I don't think she was being dishonest at all about the total caloric intake. Um, do I think it was consistent every single day for the past six months, 4,000 calories? Absolutely not. I feel like it was a titration up from the point where she was being released and having 2,500 calories and maintaining lean gains and then slowly titrating it up over the course of the next six months, relatively inconsistently, but having days where it was upwards of 4,000 calories per day in order to maintain it. And the consequently uh, reducing her calories to any significant degree would cause her total weight loss. Um, but it has been well over a year and we've not heard anything about it. Um, personally, I'm hoping for the best for her and that she hasn't gotten to a point where she has reached a relapse and has had to have the inpatient hospitalization again, um, or that she's just, you know, gotten so much harassment that she's decided it's a good thing. There's been a lot of rumors on her website. I actually did go to her website and read her blog. Um, some people had commented that she was missing. Um, so I looked into that and apparently that is just an unsubstantiated claim. The links that people have are, um, yeah, either about like a 29 year old woman or a 23 year old woman, or they're just everybody that isn't her. Um, so yeah, I don't, I actually don't know what that whole thing was about. Um, or if it was, it's been something that has been redacted. The 24 year old female has been located. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know what this whole thing was about. Apparently, uh, someone thought that she was like missing or something, and um, there was like some potential controversy there, but that has unsubstantiated claims so yeah when it comes to this uh i also want to just raise more awareness on eating disorders in general and i feel like this is a good way to put that out now again um for this individual it is absolutely the case that uh the 4,000 calories per day when you factor in things like recovery when you factor in things like weight training uh to a very extensive exhaustive means that it is not completely outlandish due to the hypermetabolic response to recovery that is elicited. Any other individual under any other circumstance, absolutely not going to be the case. And if an individual is utilizing 4,000 calories per day, every single day in order to maintain or gain weight, um, there is a lot more in concern there. Um, one, if you're not gaining weight at 4,000 calories, uh, you had to have highly started to do an incredibly aggressive, poorly designed 
bulk or if you're actually eating 4,000 calories per day and remaining that absolutely yoked, you have to be doing an extensive amount of weight training and cycling and cardiovascular work and probably also be on a high amount of performance enhancing drugs or you just have to be like a long distance athlete who utilizes that many calories. But again, all else held constant, if you see a bodybuilder eating 4,000 calories per day and they're remaining relatively yoked and they do that consistently year round, that is 1,000% indicative of performance enhancing drug use in my opinion, or somebody with very poor insulin uh, resistance in tandem with things like going to the gym very frequently as well as incorporating a lot of cardiovascular work. If someone is athletic, I think that there is more leeway there, but all else held constant, just a gym rat going to the gym eating 4,000 calories per day, um, bunch of red flags. So, so I can see why there is so much contention here, but I think it is very uninformed contention and it makes sense to have some amount of doubt and skepticism, but to gloss over the fact that there is in fact things like an eating disorder in hand here, I just feel like that is a crucial piece of information that everybody else is just sort of glossing over. So let me know what you guys think. Um, obviously there's going to be a lot of contention with things like, you know, you have to be stupid or you can't be this gullible. Um, but I don't know, this is my rationale, my reasoning behind it because Again, anecdotally speaking, I do know, um, you know, I, literally dozens of people that have had struggled with this. I do know a fair few of them that have been in hospital. And um, surprisingly enough, I do know a fair few of them, which after recovery, they do want to do things like bodybuilding competitions. They do want to do things like powerlifting. They do want to do things like getting more active into the gym and doing more weight training. But usually it's a timeline that is divorced relatively far from when they're actually out of inpatient. Usually it's like a year to two years. And to see somebody go literally right from out of inpatient, like the next month to also doing like heavyweight training in a gym, um, this is the first time that I'm actually seeing it and actually seeing it amplified to this degree on social media. So um, let me know what your guys' thoughts are, comments, questions, concerns. Please keep the comment section relatively civil. I don't want to hear a lot of like, oh, it looks disgusting, this is emaciated, yada yada yada. There's plenty of that in all the comments and the videos, you know, um, but I mean, encouraging conversations like, you know, um, these practices could potentially be unhealthy, here's what you should look out for, you know, keep everything with good intentions in mind. I'm not going to place the comments very heavily, but if there's just like flagrant bullying, I don't think that has any in place in the comment section. This is probably going to be like one of the only times I'm actually like moderating a comment section just to make sure it's not a bunch of like flagrant harassment. But again, you know, uh, encouraging conversation is important. So, you know, if you say, hey, you know, all else are constant, like, yeah, it could be the case where she isn't, but you don't want to promote binge eating because of these reasons, then, I mean, that's a perfectly fair conversation to have. And it's a very important conversation to have too, because again, you could have deceptive practices leading to negative consequences or in tandem with this, you could have this being more inspirational of a story where, you know, people who are too afraid to eat recognize that they can eat practically like double their calories and potentially still be fit and be healthy. And you know, even if it's going to an individual that is in recovery and they aren't able to eat 4,000 calories, having somebody eat a maintenance calorie of like 2,200 or someone who's eating like 2,000 calories per day and making progress into it, I mean, at the end of the day, a net positive is very good. But again, um, I personally don't think that there was anything being deceptively marketed in terms of like being actually dishonest about the calorie intake um, in so far that she actually has days where she's eating it. Uh, and actually would have the necessity for 4,000 calories per day. Towards the end, it does get a little bit concerning seeing differences in her total body weight and structure when compared to some of her other posts, but to me, it looks relatively indicative of things like relapse, but again, I don't have any like more pertinent information. I don't have any more recent information, nor do I have anything outside of like any of her posts. Uh, I can't get access to things like the TikTok accounts showing more information, so um, we are kind of left you know, just kind of hoping that that's not the case, but um, yeah, hopefully you guys can get some amount of insight from some of the studies that we post, and hopefully this can shed some light into the conversation about eating disorders and help inform more people about the risks and complications and concerns, because again, you can experience things like amenorrhea, you can have sorts of things like uh, hormone regulation problems, people mentioned the issues with thyroid hormone, um, you know, you can have death this is a, this has an incredibly high mortality rate and then there's something that is obviously going to want to be uh, ameliorated first and foremost you want to have people recover and live happy healthy lives you don't want people to struggle with these things um so you know 
I can see both sides where this is going to be triggering for some people in the sense that uh, it is going to elicit some amount of response where they want to look this thin. I can also see the other end where people find this to be inspiring and they actually want to gain weight as a result. Um, so, you know, different strokes work for different folks, but at the end of the day, whatever you can do to really ameliorate the concerns for the potential to relapse for any individual, I feel like is a great thing. Um, and I feel like giving support to those people that are legitimately trying their best to move forward and to undergo recovery should always be a laudable goal and we should strongly give them encouragement and support uh, and try not to tear them down because at the end of the day you know they're already fighting a hard enough battle and if somebody's saying that you know i want to eat like 3300 calories and you know put on this weight and do a lot better instead of knocking around saying oh that's so unsustainable and this and this and this you know it may be better to help them gradually get to that point and say you know keep pushing past your goals you know no matter how hard it gets make sure that you are staying on top of it i know you got this you know be supportive that's, that's pretty much what i feel like is um, going to be important with this and again i'm not a doctor not an endocrinologist not a gynecologist not a dietitian um but you know the, the case can be made that um some of these claims aren't completely unsubstantiated and given some of the clinical literature that we have on the subject of EDs and training, this might not actually be super far-fetched. Um, so again, let me know what you guys think and until next time, doodle.